me today. Um, it's been it's been a really interesting couple of days, and the Lord's been showing me a lot. And um, a few weeks ago, He said, I said, um, He woke me up in the middle of that, as He usually does, and said to me, we, meaning the church, meaning people in general, an excuse, and um, exclusively, especially the church, uh, specifically the church, he said, we have not yet learned what we need to to come out of this crisis. And I said, what do, we, what do you mean? And, and he began to show me things that, about unity and how um, unity looks. He began to show me this one website called Church Spot where, where it's just about one church and being one. And I can't even describe to you like he began to show me it's so vast I wish I could uh, put my head on the screen and and show you what he was showing me it's so amazing and I said Lord how do we get there and he said look at me go back and look at my ministry, look at how I did things. And when when you go back and look at Jesus' ministry and how Jesus operated and how he did things, Jesus was all about his father. He was all about two things. He three things. He was all about kingdom his father and people. His his father God, the kingdom of God, and ministering to not people's wants but people's needs. And he showed showed me a new way of doing ministry, you know? When I look at most of the ways we do ministry, I I love uh, church and I love the way we sing and dance and worship and whatever. But I'm it's I'm in a scary place now. I'm asking Lord, although this is great, this is good, this feels good. People are getting saved, people are getting delivered, but is how we're doing it, you. And the scary answer I'm getting is most of the way we're doing church didn't come from God. Um, the, the principles came from God, but the way they're being administered came from the way we think it should be done. Um, it was, I was watching, um, uh, a worship leader, um, not someone I know really well, but, um, someone I know kind of from another church, um, talk, and he was saying, um, uh, well, my pastor doesn't feel comfortable with this, and we're, we're all supposed to be about people's experience on Sunday morning and whatever. And as I sat back and really um, began to listen uh, to this person, and this person is a blood-bought person and totally filled with the Spirit of God, but as I began to listen to him speak, um, to say that... Um, at my church, it's about my pastor and how we do things. I began to think of most churches I've been to. 
And I think we say it's all about you. We say it's all about you, Jesus. It's all for you, for your glory and your fame. It's not about me, as if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender to your way. <laughs> Beautiful song, and many other songs like it. And it's, it's true. It should be all about Jesus. It should be all about Christ and Him crucified. But my question, I'm looking at this though. I'm looking at the at the style of worship we do at um, at whatever churches you go go to. I'm looking at our liturgy at what whatever churches you go to, whether loud or soft or whatever. I'm saying, Jesus, have we ever asked you how you want to run your church? Or have we just assumed that this is the way we do it, so this is the way we'll run the church? And I'm not saying that the way we do it is bad, but I'm saying perhaps he would want us to do things a different way. So when I look, sorry, <laughs> when, I, when I look at the ministry of Jesus and how, and how he operated, he mostly was not in a building. And we always say, that the church is not a building, but I don't think we really feel that way because if we did, we go to where people are. I think we're scared. I think churches are really scared to really go, to really do ministry the way Jesus did because Jesus was a hellraiser. He came to uh, raise hell. He came to release the broken. He came to set people free. He came to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And I think over the years we've gotten so comfortable with our churchology that now I'm thinking that we've just gotten so lost in whatever liturgy that we do, uh, whether it's uh, a long worship service, two songs or whatever, and, or whether it's like we sit in church for an hour, we sit, we sing, we, no, we sit, we stand, we go home. And we have our potluck on Sunday. That's our liturgy. That's what we do. And or we're loud and we're demonstrative and we're like, praise Jesus and we're like all that. And I'm and I'm wondering though, is this really reaching who it needs to reach? And I'm and I'm I'm questioning a lot. I'm saying, is this what you wanted for your church, or should we be um, should we be perhaps going to where places that are not comfortable, um, and not just handing out tracts, but showing love. And what I mean is, I always had. Um, had a kind of dream of I don't drink, I don't like bars, I don't do that kind of stuff. But I always had a thing of maybe Jesus going to a bar not to drink or not to preach or anything, but just to sit down, order, order a Sprite or Coca-Cola and just talk to people. 
um, not about the Lord, not to start, um, not to start forcing people or being forceful, but just to encourage them and just to be a listening ear and then and then that way his love or his grace will be be seen to people but no those are the places we abo avoid or we we test we say christians shouldn't go there and my question is wouldn't jesus go there not to participate but to be a light in the darkness. How can we be a light in the darkness what, then if the places that are the darkest, we are afraid to go. We are afraid to, like, it's just, it's just weird to me. And I think our way of doing ministry church-wide and, and in North America needs to change. Like, I think we think ministry is if we feed the homeless, if we have a team to do that, that's ministry. If we partner with this uh, person doing this, that's ministry. Yes, that's part of ministry. But, but in the Bible, I never saw Jesus partner with with anyone. He went out. He went out. He served. He. It wasn't dependent on a team. It's like outreach has become a sidebar when it should be the main deal. The purpose of the church for me is to show people Christ so that they would want his salvation so that they would want to be in relationship with him but not to not to just sit in a church service whatever church service you sit in loud or soft or whatever uh however you worship and I, i'm telling you that that god is not impressed with your shout unless your shout has meaning behind it and I'm just wondering the way we're doing church, is it the most effective way possible? How, how we pushed the main thing to the side and made the side thing the main thing? Um, I don't know. I'm just having all these questions. And um, I think that the Lord wants us to change the church narrative of, of the way we do church. He wants us to, I, I feel not only we're getting back to some kind of new normal, I don't think the new normal just means, okay, we're now wearing masks to church and we're, and we're taking our temperature, we're social distancing in church. I don't think that is the new normal he's talking about. I think that there, that there is a spiritual new normal that is going to be taking place. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, Lord, what do you want from the church? Like, what do you want from us? Because I don't think many of us have asked that question um we've asked it on a spiritual level lord we, we 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 keep everything so spiritual that we don't ask ask it on a base level like lord uh how do you want our sermons to be structured do you want a pulpit do you want this do you want that and we don't think god cares about that stuff but he does. It's his church. And I think if we open ourselves up to ask the hard questions, 
Lord, do you do you want sermons like this, or do you want us to to actually do it in a different format? Do you you know? I don't know. I think we need to ask those questions, though, according to what our what our church structure is and what we can do. I think he needs to get the glory, and I don't think we really understood. We really understood that God cares about everything. God cares about the way we structure our churches and our services. And I don't think half of what we do is, is, um, is from God. I think it's from man and the way man has done church for centuries. I think that we've just replaced suits and ties and uh, the church, the churches back then, with jeans and sneakers and whatever. I don't, and I think it's time we ask God, Lord, how would you like us to run your church? And I think, because I think what's happening now is He's taking the structure that we've set and just abide with it. He, he's like. Oh well, if they want want me to show up like that, that's how I'll show up. But he wants so much more than the structure that we've set. We didn't even set it. People before said it, and we were like, "This works." So let's follow it without even taking one second to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want for your church? And if we do that, he will take over and turn structures that you wouldn't believe it. And people will be running to the church like you wouldn't believe. He will give structure, insight, and revelation. But we don't take the time to ask questions because we think, oh, this is working, so let's just do it. Let's just partner with this organization to to do this certain thing without even asking the Lord, okay, do you want our structure partnership to change? And we see, um, God is so meticulous. When I look at um, the building of the tabernacle and other stuff like that, and he was so meticulous for everything. He told them what kind of wood to use. He told them, oh, build it this way. Build it that way. Build it this way. Or use these kind of windows. Use this kind of wood. He, it, it was so detailed, so structured that if you read um, the tabernacle, both David's tabernacle and Moses' tabernacle and the ark and even somebody finding a wife or a husband. He was so meticulous in giving instructions that they didn't have to think of anything. And we say God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I'm wondering if we think that God has stopped speaking. If, like, we think, okay, you give me a vision, but I have to figure out how to do it. You've given me a, a um, the calling to run a church, but I have to figure out, I have to get the people together. And yes, there is lots of work on your part, but he will give the blueprint and I'm, and, but God will give the blueprint and I fear that we've give that we've taken the, uh, the blueprint for the church out of God's hands and just done what we, what we wanted with it. And I think that, 
there lays the problem. And I don't think the way we're running church now is not is not godly. I think it is very godly. I think it's what we know. I think it's what we're used to. I'm just saying, I wonder if there's more. I wonder if God wants to give each pastor the blueprint step by step like he did with Noah, like he did with David, like he did with Moses, like he did with uh, Rebecca finding her husband. Like, I'm just wondering, is there more to this thing than what we're currently experiencing? I think, like I said before, like this new normal is also a spiritual normal. And I think we need to figure out, okay, uh, what does this look like? Um, it was, it's very strange. One time, I had a dream that all, this was way before COVID. Uh, um, I get prophetic dreams sometimes. And one time I had a dream that all the pulpits burned to the ground. And there were no more pulpits. The Lord just burned all the pul pulpits. It was like, a big bonfire in churches all over the world and it was just a way and he changed the way that pastors actually connected with people um in my dream uh he talked about um the puppets being a way uh to separate pastors from the people um, and the people thinking that the pastors were greater than them because they stood at the pulpit. So he took the pulpit away so that the pastors really had to um, con uh, sit with the people, uh, labor with the people. And each church, after that uh, worldwide pulpit burning, had to come up with ways to engage their people, how to come up with teams. Some churches had teams to engage with people. Some churches, um, the pastor would sit among the people and preach. Some, like, you know, it was so amazing, the different strategies for the different churches that the Lord had. Um, uh, with um, in regards to after the pulpit burning and that was just one example if I told you all the examples it would blow your mind that we, we'd be here till next week um, it's I think God wants to do a lot more if we just let go let go of what we think church is let go of what we think church does. I think we've made God in a way too spiritual. He is spirit. The Bible says he, he is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But he's also um, a meticulous somebody who, who loves structure, who loves decency, who loves order. I said to someone in a letter one time, I said, um, the Bible says, um, uh, do things in decency and in order. And I asked that person a question in that letter. I said, um, but who, but whose order? God's order or your, or yours? And I think we've relegated God to only the spiritual aspect of church and we've done the physical stuff ourselves but what he's saying now is in this new normal I need to be involved in how you structure your services I need to be involved in in every aspect of your church I need to be involved in whether you know 
we have to buildings or outside things or whatever. Like, he said, I need to be involved. He said, stop relegating me to this spiritual being that is supposed to be just spirit and like the spirit of God. Yes, he is spirit, but he wants to be involved in structure as well. And that goes for physical lives as well. He, d he just doesn't want to be a spirit in your life where you ask for stuff that you talk to, that you whatever. He wants to know everything. He wants to be involved in how you manage your money, how you manage your kids if you have them, how you manage your family, how you do your life. He wants to be involved in even the movies you choose. He wants to be, he's sick of being relegated to just a spiritual thing. Oh Lord, we worship you, but we we leave you um, to, to the spiritual part and figure out the physical stu stuff ourselves. He wants to be a part of every aspect of church and of your life. And when you do that, that's the beginning of this new normal. That's the beginning of this new normal. And when you let go of what you think you know, oh my God, he will do things that you would never have thought. When you structure things the way he structures, that the way he wants you to structure them, Oh my God, he will do things that will blow your mind, that will have people come running t to your church, that will have people come running to your center. The things I'm seeing in my head, I can't even uh, tell you the revelation that if we let go of what we think is church, what we think of is the old structure, he will do things that will blow our minds and we will take over the world. And what I've, what I, what I really thought of doing, uh, if I finally get to pastor, if the Lord opens up that door for me to senior pastor, I thought of myself every January just taking a break not to take a break but to ask him about the structure of the ministry the structure of the year what he wants to change because I always want to go with the pulse of God beyond everything else and I think in ministries in church we get ourselves in we get ourselves involved in what works for that season so we and we never change it so we go through the same thing for 10 years without saying hey maybe the lord wants us to change the structure maybe the lord wants us to put a woman sunday in or whatever like maybe the lord wants us to do this for this time, because we don't think God cares. We think that as long as we have our worship songs and we say we hoop and holler or we quietly preach or we do our spiritual liturgy, whatever it is, depending on uh, the church that we are a part of, that's okay. But I hear the Lord saying, no, it's not. He says, I need structures to change. I need church politics to move out of the way. I need to be the center of every church. I need to structure some things. I want to put some things in place that are totally new and will seem off the wall. He said, I want to burn what's old to make room for what's new. I'll say that again. He said, 
I want to burn what's old to make room for what's new. And most of these structures, we, we didn't put in place. They were there when we got there. We figured, okay, this is working. So let's just do it. When, when he's saying, no, I don't want what's working. I want what's right and righteous. I want the structure that I want for your particular region. Because what we're not getting is every church, every pastor, every region has it's the same calling, but a, but a different way, um, different demons that they're facing. And the Lord has separate structures for the different churches, depending on the size of the church, depending on the mission of the church, depending on the strengths and weaknesses of the pastor, depending on how big the teams, but, but everybody's following the same thing. So the Lord can't break new structures in because um, senior and associate pastors won't let them because they think this is working, this is getting souls into the kingdom. He just doesn't want souls to come into the kingdom. He wants droves of people to get in relationship with him. And if you let him, pastors, set the structure of, of your church totally, you will see growth that you wouldn't believe. Lord God, I pray that this word be... be rooted and grounded in your our heart. Lord God, I pray that even now you begin to set structures. You begin to do things that only you can do. Minister to every pastor, every leader um, watching this, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for using me as a vessel. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, thank you guys for for um, bearing with me and thank you for just being with me and thank you for supporting my Facebook ministry and YouTube ministry and don't be afraid to share share this word or to um, message me or to whatever if you have any questions I love to answer questions I love to communicate with people. I love to connect with people. Thank you, guys. Love you so much. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And then I find you in the mystery And I'll turn deep My faith will stand And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When I'll turn the rise my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders, let me walk upon the 